pray. Father, we, I thank you for this opportunity now. And I pray that the words of my mouth will be life that will be guided and directed by your Holy Spirit. The meditation will be that which comes only from you. Add what we need. Remove what is unnecessary. And I pray, oh God, that not only will you let people hear, but let it be received in their heart that they may be transformed, renewed, recommitted in Jesus name amen 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 we're going to continue our principle series and I'm not going to go back and review all the uh, principles maybe that in the last message uh, that we do on these principles I might go through all 30 of them real quickly amen but uh, today we are wanting to uh, look at our text uh, found in the 10th chapter of Hebrews Hebrews chapter 10 and we're looking at verse 24 and 25 it says and let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Amen. Amen. And we just like to use for a subject title, Not By Yourself. Not by yourself. That has a lot of connotations. Amen. Amen. But the principle or the statement that I want to share in this message is simple. It's God doesn't call us. This is the principle that was shared. And I just added a little bit and took out a little bit. But it says, it, it's God doesn't call us to go it alone in his or her walk of faith. God doesn't call us to go it alone in our walk of faith. In other words, it's necessary to have others, believers in our lives. Amen. Amen. In the book of Acts chapter 2 that we read earlier, this was Peter's first message after being filled with the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. And Peter, the one who denied Jesus, the one who... Uh, always had something to say. The one who uh, just uh, was impulsive and impatient at times. That Peter is the Peter that we're talking about. And in the second chapter, after Peter preaches uh, a, a message, the message, the gospel, of Jesus Christ, his, his, his death, his resurrection. The people were convicted by the Holy Spirit and they wanted to receive Jesus and they wanted to be baptized. And when we look at the verses in chapter 2, verses 40 through 47, there are several things that we can easily see that comprise what we know today as the church, as an organization, but the church is really the body of Christ. It's every believer 
in Jesus Christ. And if you'll notice, they were first saved. Amen. They were first saved. They received and believed on Jesus Christ and his forgiveness and love and sacrifice on their behalf. But after they were saved, they didn't go on their merry way. Come on now. They didn't stray off and allow other priorities to get in their way. Amen. They made Jesus the priority of their lives. Now, how did they demonstrate that Jesus was first? By fellowshipping with Jesus' people. Yeah. Amen. Amen. By fellowshipping, by staying with those body of believers, not hit or miss, but it says that they had all things common. In other words, they, they, they shared everything and, and they did it consistently and they did it ongoing. Amen. You didn't see them once or twice a year <laughs> or once in a while when things may get a little rough or when a holiday comes up, you know, Easter, Mother's Day, Christmas, EMC, <laughs> holiday, special times that we we, we, we feel like then, oh, yes, it's time to go to church because my mama went to church. My, my grandmother's there. But why are you there? Our bigger question is, why are you not there? They, these new believers were close to each other, and they continued. They didn't stray away. They continued to be with each other. They shared meals together. And the Bible says over 3,000 were added. 3,000. God added to the church. God did it yeah. himself. Yeah. And so that lets me know it's not me that can do it. But it's God that can do it. And I believe that God has been stirring some hearts, yeah. but hearts have been hardened and resistive. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But they shared food uh, and they shared their possessions with those who had needs. They shared communion together. They studied together. They were taught together. They were uh, loved together and one another. That must have been a joyous time. They, they, it says that they were, 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 were filled with God's spirit and joy and rejoicing. There is joy in God's house. Yes. Amen. 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 Yes. When you come and attend uh, in trueness, as Jesus said, in spirit and in truth, then you will experience joy. Amen. Yes. Amen. Because the Bible says where two or three are gathered in who? In my name. There I will be in the midst. Too many times <laughs> there are people not assembling themselves together. Come on now. Amen. They have made God a auxiliary instead of a necessity. But they want God to answer their prayers, open the doors, bless them, make them uh, happy and 
heal them, and, and then every now and then they may come. But understand that this is the way in which you can tell if you belong to Jesus. Because you are going to want to be in the house with other believers. Yes. Come on now. You're going to want to be in that place, not only being blessed, but also being a blessing. Yes. Amen. 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 God has blessed you with a gift that the church needs that without something won't be complete. Yes. Amen. Amen. We make everything but God a priority. Y'all think about it. When it's time to go to work, where are we? We hit the clock. We're there. When happy hour, I, well, I better not go there. <laughs> My whole point is we put busyness first and God last are optional. But God wants you to understand it's not optional. It's not optional. Attending church is not an option. It is a command of God. Now, you might say, well, and we'll get there in a minute because I'm going to address that. They shared their food. They took communion together. They studied together. They saw miracles. Listen, when God's people come together uh, to glorify and praise God and love on one another, then something is going to happen not only in the church, but something's going to happen in the community. Something's going to happen in the state. Something's going to happen in the country. Something's going to happen in the world. The Bible says that they saw the miracles and signs that were done. We can see miracles and signs that God can do and wants to do. Only thing is, he doesn't have any laborers. Amen. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Yes. Amen. Amen. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. And so we need to pray to the Lord to send more laborers. Yes. Amen. Amen. How is it that we can attend so many other things and neglect what's eternally important? Amen. Amen. Neglect what's eternally important for what is temporary right now. Amen. Amen. Jobs come and go. Houses <laughs> come and go. Cars come and go. Clothes come and go. Fashions come and go. Everything that is in life now is just temporary. And so we must focus our eyes on that which is what? Eternal. And God's eternal message is that we uh, assemble ourselves together in God's house. Amen. Amen. In the book of Hebrews, they were faced with a lot of, of, of persecution coming from mainly other Jewish believers, uh, not Jewish believers, but Jew, Jewish Judaizers or Judaism, those who believed in, in the law. Because these new Jews believed in Jesus Christ. 
they believed in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Understand, they were coming out of a system where they had to sacrifice bulls and lambs and goats and pigeons and, and, and all of those things into a faith in Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone, period. No more sacrificing animals, no more uh, ceremonial washings, no more in just Jesus. And so the traditional Jews at that time did not go along with that perspective. And so the writer of Hebrews is now encouraging the new believer. Amen. They are encouraging the new believers. And so not only did they have to deal with their other Jewish people, but they also had to deal with the persecution and the ridicule coming from non-believers and Gentiles. Amen. Amen. And amen. But yet, they found it necessary to assemble themselves together. They were encouraged to come to church. Sometimes we want to attend church as a, as a spectator. We want to be entertained. Amen. We want uh, a preacher who, I guess, hoops and sings and <laughs> plays an instrument. We want a choir that sings like angels or a praise team that, 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 that is able to just sing. And there's nothing wrong with good music. There's nothing wrong with, with, with good preaching as long as it's biblical and not a show. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with any of that. But that's not the sole reason you come. You don't come to be entertained. But you come, one, to worship. Well, you might say, well, uh, you know, church comes on TV and, uh, you know, I can worship at home. Well, that would be true. The only thing is that the church and coming to church, attending church, is not just for worship. Worship is part of it, but that's not the totality of it. Come on, y'all. Help me out here. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Well, you know, I can tune in to teachers on TV and, you know, have Bible study on TV. Well, yeah, but that's not the totality of the reason you come to church. Well, you know, there are different platforms and there are different uh, uh, venues that I can use to, 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 to hear gospel music, to hear preaching, to hear Bible studies. You know, I don't have to come to church. And if that's all church is about, that would be a valid point. But that's not all that church is about. So what is church about? Well, let's see what, what Im impedes people from coming to church. First, some people choose not to attend because they've been treated very badly. Come on, y'all. Yes. By people in the church. Mm -hmm. they, they, they have been hurt by people in the church. Now, understand, when you come to church, you're not coming to heaven. Yes. Amen. Amen. You're not coming to perfection. But you're coming to pursuers of God. Yes. 
And in the pursuit of God, you will see some mistakes. You will see some people that are spiritually mature, and you will see some people that are spiritually immature. Yes. But you don't get mature by isolating yourself. You mature within the church and with the encouragement yes. of God's people. Amen. But I can understand you've been hurt. You, perhaps you attended a church that was judgmental or maybe legalistic. No, you can't wear that. You, no, you can't say that. No, you must do it. You know, bunch of rules. I understand. But that is still no excuse not to attend church. Maybe you need to attend church a different church. But God's standard is that you attend church. Why? Because he didn't call us to go it alone. Amen. Some people don't come to church because they're shy. They're shy. They're shy. You know, there's some shy. Well, I, I don't, I, I yeah, I can sing, I can, but I'm just shy. <laughs> well, you know what? The best way to get over shyness is to trust God through the shyness. Yes, amen. To trust God to acknowledge your struggle and trust God to give you the strength to persevere. Sometimes God has, as Paul had, a thorn in the flesh to keep him humbled down and focused on God. Sometimes shyness is, is God's way of helping you to stay dependent upon him. It's not an excuse not to get involved. It's a reason that God can use our a, a, a weakness or a tool that God uses to keep you dependent upon him. I'm one of those shy people. Oh, no, you're kidding me. No, you ask my classmates, they would have told you. He was very quiet and very shy. Yeah, and how in the world would God choose somebody that was shy and quiet? Self-conscious. Kind of didn't want to be in the spotlight. Didn't want anybody. Would, would have rather took a bullet than to get in front of people and talk. That was. But God, took, God knew that. And what that does is keep me humbled and depending on God. Amen. Amen. It keeps me focused on God because I know within myself I'm shy. <laughs> and. And, and, kind of, and an introvert, that, that's who I am. That's what I am. But some people who, who see me doing this, I, I remember one of my classmates when they visited, they, they were amazed. Well, I don't get the credit. God gets the credit. Yes. Amen. Yes. God takes our weaknesses yes. and uses them to keep us dependent upon him because through him we overcome our weakness and we can't take credit for it because it's him and him alone. Yes. Amen. But many times we don't want to do that because we don't feel comfortable uh, because it's not about God, it's about us. And God has to let us know, see, you don't want to say nothing or get involved because it makes you feel uncomfortable. But guess what? The greatest opportunity for growth is in the crucible of uncomfortableness. You don't grow being comfortable. You don't grow being just the familiar. You grow when you step out of the zone or something that you're not comfortable with, that, 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 that you're not good at perhaps or that, that, that you struggle with, but yet because God has 
has confirmed in your heart that this is what I want you to do. You trust God to give you strength over the weakness, over the struggle. And this is one person who can tell you God will do it. And God is doing it. If you stay with him and just abide in him, just wait on him and trust in him, he will give you that which you think keeps you from being who you think he ought to be. He will give you the strength to overcome, to become who he called you to be. Yeah. Amen? Amen? So some people don't come to church because they're just shy. They, they, they're afraid somebody uh, is going to get in their business or they just, they just don't feel comfortable around uh, people. Some people use distance as a reason. Well, you know, I live too far from the church. But we'll go where we want to go, won't we? Amen? Amen? If there was a concert we wanted to see in Atlanta, guess what? We'd drive to Atlanta. Yes. If there was a concert we want to see in Nashville, guess what? We'll drive to Nashville. We go where we want to go. Amen? Amen. But yet, for God, oh, that, that church is just too far away. <laughs> just an excuse. Some are too busy and have too much responsibility from their perspective. Well, you know, I'm just too busy. I, I got to work. I got to, every, we understand that. Amen. We understand, God understands that. But guess what? The, one of the strongest restaurant fast food chain in America is Chick-fil-A. Everybody else is open seven days a week. They're open what? Six days a week. They rest on Sunday. They close on Sunday. They, they don't always come out and say why they're closed. But you can understand. They, they'll say, well, the people need to rest. The machines need to rest. The building needs to rest. Referring back really to the Sabbath. Yes. Amen. A day of, of, of rest. But yet they are one of the most prosperous companies. And they are closed on Sunday. Yes. What am I saying? I'm saying when you choose to make God and, and assembling with, with God's people a priority... God will open doors for you to make enough money in five days than you would in seven. I'm a living witness. I'm a living witness. I'm too busy. I, I, I'm too tired. I'm not interested. I don't like the preacher. I don't like the atmosphere. I don't like the songs. Well, come and sing your song. <laughs> Come and preach your sermon. Amen. Amen. In other words, you have and I have no excuse for not coming to God's house because God commands it. But the other part is because I want to. Coming and seeing this, you know, is not very encouraging. But it's what God called me to do. You know, all these empty pews, I, well, I guess the angels are sitting there. <laughs> it doesn't encourage you. But what encourages me is one or two people who get it and who share it and who give all they have, every gift and every talent they have, they use it for the glory of God. That's what encourages me. It's not the big numbers. It's not the many people because <laughs> when, you, when you get a lot of people, say you have 100 people, only about 20 of them are really committed. Amen. And maybe even less than that. And so, so many, some people use the reasoning, well, I'm just too busy, I'm too tired. 
Well, yeah, if you're too tired, <laughs> you need to do something else. Amen. You need to do something else. Let me go on. Some don't attend because they are frightened of being rejected and are harshly judged and criticized. Harshly judged and criticized. Now, there are some folk that I've met in church that are, that are finger pointers. I remember when. Yeah, but God don't. And who are you here for? Are you here for the people or are you here for God? Yes. Because if you're here for God, God will send the right people. Come on, y'all. God will send the people that you need around you. God will send the people that, that, that he wants to sow into your life, use to sow into your life. He'll send those people. Let me go on. I can worship from the house. I can study the Bible from the house. Yeah, you can. You can. You can. You can do that. You can do that. But that's not what attending church is totally about. That's part of it. So let me share with you the real reason that you come to church. The real reason you come to church and the real purpose of the church as mentioned in Hebrews chapter 3 and chapter 10. The real reason you come to church is to keep you from drifting back into the world. Come on y'all. I'm preaching now. I guarantee you people who do not attend church live, I guarantee you they are drifting back toward their old life and habits. I guarantee it. And if you are drifting back out of fellowship with God's people, guess what? Pretty soon you'll be drifting out of fellowship with God. So the reason you come to church is not just to worship. It's not just to sing. It's not just to study the word. It's not just to hear the preaching. It's not just to, 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 to do things. The reason you really come to church is so that you won't drift back out into the world again. Yes. Amen. I guarantee you the people who are not attending church, I guarantee you they are slipping back out into their old habits, yes. their old companions, yes. their old situations. Yes. Well, you might say, well, no, that's not me. Well, show me. A coal won't stay hot if it's not next to the fire. Amen. You separate the coal from the fire, pretty soon that coal is going to go out. And that's what the purpose of the church is, to keep us hot, to keep us fired up for Jesus. Amen. Amen. To keep us on track because all of us can drift. When, when, when things get hard in the world, when the money gets tight, when, 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 when situations get rough, we can drift back out into the world again. We can drift back out into our old stuff that we used to do because we don't think that this church stuff is working. Amen. Amen. We are called to come to church to learn, to grow, but also to keep from drifting back into our old selves. The world has a magnetic force on people right now. The internet, the YouTube, the Facebook, those are things that are good to a sense, and those are things that attract us or distract us from other things. But when you attend church, God uses that to anchor you. My soul 
is anchored in the Lord. Well, how does it get anchored? It gets anchored when you hear somebody in the church tell how God healed their body. It's anchored when you see somebody going through the same thing you went through, but they came out victorious. That's an anchor. It's hearing the testimony that when you had your back against the wall and, 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 and you didn't know what to do or how to do it or when to do it, and God came through, that anchors you in the Lord. You got to hear those things and experience those things so that you will stay anchored in the Lord because the world is steadily trying to pull you back. And without attending church and, and fellowshipping with God's people, you'll be pulled. You'll be pulled. And soon pulled from God. The fellowship with God that you used to have. The time with God that you used to spend. You don't do it anymore. Let me go on. Why do we attend church in person? It's to share love. It's to be loved and to share love. Some people just want to be loved on and not extend love. But no, that's not the way it works. It's to share love and to receive love. Amen? Amen. Secondly, it's to encourage one another. Encourage one another. When you talk to somebody and they share with you something that you're going through, but they're telling you, baby, you can make it. The Lord's with you. You can make it. Let me pray with you. Yeah. And they call you up at home and say, how you doing, baby? How you doing, honey? I just, you, you on my mind? I want to just call you and see how you're doing, and I want to pray with you. I want you to know that I'm praying for you. And I tell you what, when people really pray for you, you're going to know it. You're going to know it in your soul. You're going to know it. In, there's something about people praying that, 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 that causes you on the inside to settle down and causes you to have some strength that you didn't have before, have some insight that you didn't have before, have some peace that you didn't have before, have some, in, some, some direction that you didn't have before. That's the power of prayer, and you can't get that in just anywhere the best place to get it is to get connected in God's house with God's people that pray for you and that lay hands on you and that love you yeah. anyhow. Glory to God. Yeah. I'm not talking about those little criticizers. If you make a little mistake, they ready to kick you, kick you under the table. No, that's not what, they, <laughs> that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about even if you mess up, they still there. They, they still say, come on, you can do it. The Lord is with you. I'm praying for you. I'm, I'm standing with you. Just call me when you don't feel good. Call me when something's going on with you. Just call me up or come on, let's have dinner, honey. Let's just spend a little time together singing and praising God. Or let me just hear what you want to talk about because I can tell you some things about God. I can tell you when I was in the valley. I can tell you when I was broken. I can tell you when money was short. I can tell you when I lost a child. I can tell you when I lost my job. I I can tell you all about it but the Lord is my deliverer the Lord is my strength the Lord is my rock in the weary land hallelujah for glory to God it's to share love and to encourage you and it's also you come to church to be held accountable Amen. Amen. Yes. When somebody asks you how you're doing and what you've been doing, they're not being nosy if they genuinely love you. They want to know. Yes. They want to know. Yes. They want you to, to feel that you are significant to them. You can't 
can't get that from a television show. Amen. Let me go on. The writer of Hebrews used the word to stir. To stir. To st that, that word in the Greek literally means to stimulate or to incite. And Dr. Stanley broke it down and said it also means to irritate. <laughs> Every now and then we have to have some irritation. Amen? Yeah. To produce a pearl, they have to have some what? I irritation. Yeah. Well, well, what irritates me? Every time I see you, you're so happy. That irritates me. <laughs> Every time I see you, you're talking about the Lord. Well, you ought to try. You stimulate. You, 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 you are stimulated to keep going in Christ. That's the purpose of the church. Because if you're stimulated and motivated to keep going, then you won't drift back out into the world and into the things you used to do. And, it, and even if you're not out into the world, let me just get on this. It just came to my spirit. Even if you're not out into the world's activities, where is your mind? Is your mind focused on Jesus? Is your mind stayed on Jesus? Or is your mind stayed on the things of this world? Amen. 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 <laughs> so you may not be physically out there, but mentally and from an attitude point of view, you may be out there drifting away from God. Bitter. Mad. Angry. Holding grudges, unforgiving, unloving, proud, boisterous, high-minded, condescending. All of those things happen unless you have a good connection with God and God's people that hold you accountable. Amen. Let me go on. The main reason, as I said, we attend church is to keep from drifting. Drifting from God's people and will eventually lead to drifting from God. Yes. That's a powerful statement. That's a powerful statement. But you think about it. You think about the people who stopped going to church. Call them up and see where, where they are right now. Mm. Oh, man, my life is just terrible. It's just all messed up. I don't have this. I've been this. and Because uh, you've been drifting. And God will use the negative things to produce a positive result. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> don't think God is mad at you or trying to beat you up because some negative things happen. He uses those things to bring you back into the positive side of things. Mm -hmm. Into the side of things where he can bless you where he can trust you with his promises and with his purpose. Amen. Yeah. Let me go on. I'm almost done. Coming to church, what the media can't do, what the internet can't do, coming to church protects you and me. Yes. It protects you and me. Not just from drifting, but from complacency and inactivity. It keeps you from just existing. Protects you. If you're, if you're attending a church and, 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 and you don't since protection in that church, then change churches. Because church people protect, church, real Christians protect one another. Yeah. Amen. Because they're brothers and sisters. Yeah. If, if one weeps, we all weep. If one feels joy, we all feel joy. It's a connection. Amen. Amen. Let me give you three things to remember. One, meeting regularly 
with others in church, talking about coming to church, other believers help spur our faith. Help spur our faith. Help spur our faith. Have you ever been around somebody that is exciting and bubbly and all of that? And when you go around them, you start feeling a little excited and bubbly. Why? Because they are spurring you on. Their, their, their person, their, their personality spurs your personality. Well, it's the same way spiritually. Amen. Coming to church spurs us in our faith. Amen. Number two. Fellowship with other Christians will help to safeguard us or safeguard me and you against drifting. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 13. And in the previous point that I made, you can back see the scripture there, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24, for that first point. Let me go on. The third reason. You have a responsibility. See, that's what people fail to realize, that when God saves you, God also calls you to responsibility. You have a responsibility to use your gifts to encourage other believers. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 1 Peter 4 and 10. Some people think, I, well, I don't have a gift. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. It may not be the gift that you want. You want, but it's the gift that God wants to use. Amen. You have gifts. The Holy Spirit gives you gifts. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 12. He get, God decides what gifts to give you, but he says definitively, you have gifts. A gift and gifts. Let me move on. Some examples why you shouldn't go it alone. David was in distress. He was being sought after. And he met a young man named Jonathan. And Jonathan told David, you will be king. And Jonathan was actually legally supposed to be king because he was King Saul's son. So he was supposed to be the next in line. But he told David, you're going to be king and I'm going to be by your side. That's what not going alone does. I used to think that, you know, I'll just go alone, just handle it myself, just do it. But as I've gotten older, I, I realize, uh-uh. That's not God's plan. His plan is not for us to go it alone. His plan is for us to be inclusive of others and others inclusive of us. Y'all remember uh, Barnabas encouraged Paul. And he encouraged the other apostles to accept Paul as a true believer. Barnabas encouraged John Mark when Paul rejected him. Said, nope, he's not going. Barnabas said, well, come on, you go with me. Encouragement. Encouragement. The world will reject you if you don't meet their standards. But God will never reject you. And if we are a true reflection of God, then we can't reject, reject you either. Because that's not who God created us to be. That's why it's important. To not go it alone. But to attend God's church. Let me give you a couple of more. Ruth encouraged Naomi. Y'all remember that story? Yeah. Ruth not only did, he, did, did she encourage Naomi. But she stayed with her. Through it all. Amen. Paul held Peter to account for his hypocrisy. He was eating with the, with, with the Gentiles, and then when the Jews came around, he jumped up and acted like he wasn't. And that created a problem. 
that was hypocrisy. See, God's people hold us accountable. It doesn't feel good all the time, but it's necessary. Accountability is necessary. Amen. Amen. Jesus corrected Peter many times. <laughs> many times Jesus had to set Peter straight. Peter was worried about, well, what about this other disciple over here? <laughs> and Jesus just told him, basically, don't worry about him. <laughs> you just do what I tell you to do. You just go and do what I tell you. Feed my sheep. Feed my lambs. Paul would exhort Timothy many times. He told Timothy to preach in season and out of season. He told him to keep going even when you didn't see results. Keep going. When you have a packed house, keep going. When you don't have anybody, keep going. If I were to conclude this message, it, you can't go it alone. Don't go it alone. God never intended for us to do it on our own. But he's equipped the body of Christ, the church, to help to encourage, to love, and to be used in our gifts for his glory. God commands his followers to come together as the body of Christ. And so if it's a command, Hebrews chapter 25 says, Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25 says, not forsaking not allowing anything to get in the way. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Face to face, person to person. As is the manner of some. The manner of some now is just sit down and look at on TV, online. And I'm not knocking that, but I'm just exhorting to another level. It's still about face-to-face, person-to-person, people-to-people is God's ideal way of encouraging us, strengthening us, teaching us, and most of all, keeping us and protecting us from drifting. But exhorting, exhorting just means to urge one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. The time of Christ's return is approaching. There's an urgency now. There's an urgency. There's a great leaving of, of meeting in person. But I believe God is saying, he's urging people, it's time to come back and assemble yourselves together. To encourage one another. This has not been a popular message. And it's not supposed to be. But I hope it's a message you take to heart. Amen. And you know if you take it to heart. If you put it into action. Amen. 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 Not by yourself. As I finish this message, the prayer that was in my spirit is a very short one. It says, Lord, stir the hearts of your followers to attend church and serve. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I hope you receive it today. If you receive it, say amen. Amen. Let us stand now. We extend the opportunity to come and know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. If you've never given the Lord your life, then today is the day you can come if you sense him moving in your spirit. Also, if you know the Lord as your personal Savior, but you have drifted and you want to make a recommitment to the Lord, we invite you to come. Or let us know in the chat your intention.
Finally, if you have a special need for prayer, we ask that you come. And lastly, if you want to be part of this body of believers as a member to serve and to take action and to use your gifts for the glory of God, we invite you to come. Whatever your need is today, the, the biggest and most important step is to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. To ask him to come into your heart, forgive you of your sins, and make you part of his family. To acknowledge that you need him because you know that you have sinned and come short of his glory. But today, you want to turn from your will and your way and turn to him. And place your faith and trust in him and him alone as your personal savior. We invite you to come now as we sing together. all hearts and minds are clear now let us receive the benediction and now may the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who shall one day present us faultless and blameless before his throne with exceedingly great joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, dominion, majesty, power, and might, henceforth now and forevermore. And into his hands I commend you, in Jesus' name. Amen, and amen, and amen. God bless you. Thank you for being with us today. Amen. For those of you who are online with us, thank you for joining us. Please uh, share if you heard something today that blessed you. Share it with someone else and hopefully bless them. And hopefully you will come and uh, in person and be a part of us. Amen.